Today I have one of the coolest bikes I've ever seen. It's like a moped style transformer straight out of the movies type of a bike. This is the Runder Attack 10. Well, with something that looks as cool as this, it's got to go fast. And for the price, you would think that this would have two motors, but it doesn't. It just has a single 750 watt that peaks at 1200 watts. There's five pedal assist levels and then a half twist throttle, and the throttle matches the pedal assist level. Here's how fast all five of the pedal assist levels can go. The acceleration is pretty poppy and the motor engages pretty much the exact same time after about three fourths of a revolution on all five pedal assist levels. And then depending on which level depends on how much power hits. Now when you compare takeoff power between throttle and pedal assist, as soon as you hit the throttle, the power engages. So you do have a jump off the line a little bit faster, a little bit quicker than on pedal assist. Now I wanna talk about brakes because you got some nice, smooth and powerful hydraulic brakes. And these are my favorite type of hydraulic lever. It has this adjustable knob. So if you want more or less play, you just turn that. Now for something this expensive, I would have liked to have seen those levers connected to the tail light. That is a manual tail light. This is how long it takes to stop when topping each of the five pedal assist levels out. And right where I'm standing is my brake point. That's where I hit the brakes. Well, from top of the bike out at 26 miles per hour, it took me about 30 feet to stop on a very smooth and new trail. Now the braking was a little bit fishtelly. That back wheel did tend to slide out a little bit. So it wasn't my favorite as far as control stopping, but you do have some good power. Well, there's some cool stuff about this bike and that's what I wanna talk about now. This is actually a plastic or a composite. I'm not sure exactly what that's made out of. I'll just say plastic for simplicity. It looks like they 3D printed this and then just screwed the two halves together because you can see the lines there and there. I've never seen that before. And it's, I think it's kind of cool looking. As far as posture goes, the handlebars are fixed. The saddle is also fixed but it is very soft. I do like the saddle. I mean, you got four inches of cushion there. This is the type of bike where you're not gonna be doing a lot of pedaling if you're a taller rider. I'm pedaling kind of bow legged Most times with these types of bikes, I just go straight throttle. I just enjoy the ride a lot more when I do that. Time to test out the torque on this. They have a rating of around 65 Newton meters. That's a 26% grade and about a half a block long. That came so close to not making it, but it did. I had full throttle down and the bike had enough juice to get me to the top. I think lengthwise you couldn't go any longer at that steepness. I'm not sure if I'm ready for cold weather riding. Got the battery charged up fully. Gonna do a range test. Let's see how far I can go. I made it back from the race test and I only did 20 miles. For winter riding, I just freeze if I go much longer than that. Got to just less than 1400 feet of elevation gain and the bike's showing like a third battery left. And my average speed was 23 miles an hour, around 23 miles an hour. So good speed, 20 miles, 30% battery left and riding in cool weather, pretty happy with 20 miles. Now, as far as comfort, you got four things that make this just a nice and smooth ride. The first is the very large and soft saddle, which I talked about before. The second is a spring suspension in the back, which you can adjust just to stiffen that up or loosen it. Right now it's about halfway. Then you got some motorcycle style front suspension with plenty of travel. And then some 20 by four inch all-terrain off-road tires. So I'm gonna take it off-road and see how it performs. I'm gonna pull the suspension bike, so you gotta test that out. That was a good bump. <laughs> There's a lot of play in that rear suspension. Yeah, I'm just, that's, that's actually pretty cushy. There we go. Oh yeah, not really getting a lot of the smaller vibrations. And you got a bunch of gravel here, so those tires are just kicking butt through that, which is what you want. This thing kicks butt off-road. I was coming up this path at 16, 17 miles an hour, and it was just, it was gliding. That suspension does an awesome job with the small and the bigger bumps. I've taken a lot of bikes on this trail and have to go pretty slow to enjoy the ride to where my eyeballs aren't just, you know, shaking like crazy. So coming up at 15 miles an hour and feeling good and comfortable with that speed, that's impressive.
Let me walk you through a few more specs to finish up the review. And I wanna start in the cockpit. And the first thing in here are the leather grips, which I like because it matches the frame. It ties the bike together. And then there's a simplistic and nice feeling control pad up down to change the pedal assist levels. And then an M to scroll through the different readouts on the screen. Next to that, you have a flick bell. I like the look of the LCD screen. It is backlit, it's color. And then moving over, there's a seven speed SIS index Shimano shifter. And that's all the components on the handlebars. Another one of my favorite features about the design is the headlights. And again, this just looks like a, a 3D printed bike. They just printed this piece, put it over the headlights, and there you go. And then that also covers the wiring, just a way to clean things up. I also like the rims, how they're the same color as the frame and the grips. Again, it just helps to tie the whole bike in together. Moving down to the pedals, pretty lightweight pedals. I do like those. Then you got a Shimano Turney derailleur. There's two things I forgot to mention earlier that I want to point out. And the first one is that it does have an internal battery. Most of them are usually located right here. This one slides in from underneath. Once you unlock it, there's a lever that you just pull to the side and that will just slide out. And at the very bottom of that, there is an on off switch. I do recommend turning the battery off when you charge. The second thing is how high the frame is off the ground. I have size 11 foot shoe that just barely hits. And then if you move the pedal, all the way down. There's still seven, eight inches between the ground to that pedal, which again, is just gonna be perfect for off-road riding. Okay, so what you got here with the Rundier Attack 10 is a bike that can hit 26 miles per hour. You have incredible suspension, a soft saddle, hydraulic front fork, and then just some softer tires. If you're looking for a moped style bike to hit the off-road, this is a very good option. And then the last thing is just the cool and unique frame. Never seen a bike put together like this. So that wraps up the review. I appreciate you guys hopping on here and checking out my content. Thanks for watching and have a good day.